Welcome back, everybody, to Fantasy Bros MLB. It is time for us to have a little fun, and that means bringing Mayo and the Worm. Yeah, that's right. Everybody loves Mayo and the Worm. It's everybody's favorite duo. Welsh uh, loves them so much that he had to actually take a breath, and now he's back again joining the show. But Mike Mayer, Ryan Warmly, two of our good pals, our colleagues over at Fantasy Pros. You know them from all the work they do there on the site. Uh, as far as hosting shows, you know Ryan, and as far as uh, arguing with me, you know Mike Mayer. He always gives you crap on a daily basis on leading off, which I encourage everybody to subscribe to our channel to watch. A lot of daily fantasy baseball shows out there. We're one of the few, and we're the best one, <clears throat> just saying. So make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB and click that little bell to let goes ding for notifications. And if you missed any part of this, it's okay. You can go back and watch it all when it's done. We had an amazing guest list today. Paul Spore, Nick Pollock, Chris Meany, Frank Stample, Eno Saris, Craig Mish. Oh, my goodness. What an incredible group. Am I missing somebody? Did I forget somebody? I feel like, I feel like I there's have. somebody that's forgotten. Yeah, but uh, so. and Welsh was here too. Oh, that's all right. right. Occasionally when I'm not clicking buttons and leaving room. Like <laughs> yeah. What's going on with that? You're, you're, you're done clicking buttons. I literally anything? clicked over to one thing and somehow I turned into Twitter and I had to come back. But I love seeing these beautiful faces here. This Mike Mayer, a.k.a. Ryan Mountcastle. Lots of Mountcastle stuff going to be uh, up on the updates for uh, leading yeah. off this year. And uh, I just personally love Ryan Wormley. So I'm the yeah. worm, the worm, the Welsh. It's a, uh, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> Mayo, the worm and the Welsh. My hey. goodness. Can't get better than this. <laughs> All right. So we have a mock draft we're going to do here. It is a, uh, a 12 team Roto mock draft. I'm going to start it right now. I have the one pick. Uh, we have corner infielders. We have uh, three outfielders. We have two utilities. We're not doing bench today because Mike Mayer has more important things to do. Uh, you are drafting. Oh, I love this. You guys went five, six, seven. Mike Mayer is in the five spot. <laughs> the worm is at 106 and the Welsh. Worm and the Welsh could also work too. Just want to say Worm and the Welsh is pretty good. If we're talking like all the names here, Worm and the Welsh is pretty good. Ryan. We've said this before. Worm goes with anything. There's no yeah, name that Worm does. doesn't pair well with. That's true. But uh, like Worm and the Joe. Worm. No, Worm and Joey Joe P and the Worm. worm. Joe, Joe, Joe and the Worm. Okay. Joey P and the Worm. And the worm. Yeah. yeah. Joey P yeah, and the Worm. They usually have to end with the Worm. Ending. But say that sounds. It sounds like a band. Yeah. Joey P and the Worm. Everything and the Worm. I'm sure it was one of the bands that competed in Scott Pilgrim. Uh, which is uh, a great movie, by the way. Um, before we go after this, too, I just want to, again, thank everybody for watching and going through everything here. Uh, it has been a phenomenal uh, day here of talking baseball. I'm going to go ahead and just pause this real quick because the draft is being a little wonky on me. Uh, I don't know if it automatically picked for me or not. Did it? I hope nope. not. A little good. Talking. Really good yeah. still. All right. So here we go. I'm going to declare the Shohei Otani because last night was just the greatest thing ever. Uh, and I'm going to declare him to be one player here and i'm going to take shohei otani with my number one pick uh i'm gonna go ahead and do that because i can because i'm running the show and i'm running the draft so i'm just gonna do it um but i do believe this i mean if you are in a league where he is one player it doesn't matter what it is there's nobody like shohei otani there's nobody's gonna give you this amount of productivity yes it comes with risk because he is a pitcher something happens to the arm you're missing the bat you're missing the pitcher you're missing your number one overall pick but I'm going to go ahead and start with Shohei Otani. Uh, let's see who's joining us today. It's got uh, Florin Socks. Florin just Socks. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Florin just Socks. They go ahead and take Aaron Judge, Mr. Buster, friend of the show. Uh, Dridrak is joining us. Of course, we have Mayor, Worm, Welsh, then Juggernaut at 108, that one fool at 109. Of course, our good friend Wonky Penguin at 110, who will probably win the draft as always. always. Then we've got... Jay Gucci, uh, hey, Jay Gucci, 24, and oh, the Chalmers back, the Chalmer, who uh, who had a pretty good draft last time, so back for more. Uh, Ronald Acuna goes three overall, so Mike Mayer, you're sitting here in the five spot. Are you going to go ahead and hope that Julio falls to you like a smart person would? I am, yeah, and I actually picked, first off, I would say I picked my spot before the other two jabronis went right after me so <laughs> i asked you where i should pick you said just try to space it out so i did and then they went right after me and so i picked yeah, five yeah. intentionally because i have kind of a clear top five mm -hmm. and so well jose take. ramirez just went so julio is yours for the taking yep. julio at 105 me. worm at 106 what do you got yeah I i'm very happy to get trey turner here uh, boom. I, I without question yeah. not even need to think about it turner's my pick here there you go turner's an easy one welsh 107 what do you got 
Man, uh, you know, this is kind of a consensus, Kyle Tucker. That's what the experts say. There is just something about Mookie for me this year and the second base I love qualifications that, that I want, <laughs> I want to uh, get in on. But I am going to go Kyle Tucker here. Really tempted to go Mookie Betts. But, uh, I, you know, seven is a decent spot. I don't think I've drafted seven in any of the mock drafts we've done. So Kyle Tucker fallen to me. And the Juan Soto injury, I want to point out, change this a little bit. That oblique injury mm -hmm. has me concerned. MRI, we still haven't got the results, and obliques don't heal quickly. So this could be an IL stint. Otherwise, I think Juan Soto would have been the consensus pick here. But just while we're doing it, I am not touching it. And Ryan, about a month ago, the first round seemed like an embarrassment of riches. And then we have the Alvarez hand issue, the side issue for Soto. Things get a little bit more complicated in the first round. Yeah, for sure. And I will point out also, like, Mayor gave me a hard time for picking right behind him. Uh, I picked 12th the last time we did this at the turn. So I wanted to be more in the middle and kind of experience something else. And mm -hmm. with all the injuries in the first round, kind of getting maybe less deep than we thought it was going into draft season. It's nicer to be towards the middle now. And to be all fair, right. I think there were three open spots when I picked. So I just picked the best one that I could find. So <laughs> just, to, just to point out, I think that was about what was left. Ever the opportunist, the That's Welsh. Right. All right. We have uh, Mookie Betts going after Kyle Tucker to the Welsh. Then Juan Soto, Bobby Witt Jr. from the Wonky Penguin I am at shocked. 110. I am shocked that Kelly went with Bobby Witt. Why? That does Why not seem like That does not seem like a Kelly Kirby pick in my Maybe no. I'm completely off on it. That seems like something Kelly would rip us about going at 10. Well, uh, we'll see what she does on the turn on the way back. Alvarez at 111, Vladdy at 112, uh, which I just took Vlad in a, on the turn on the league the other day, too. And it felt good. It felt real good. I think I started oh, right, with Vlad right. and Austin Riley or something in that league. I mean, that works for me. Uh, third base, another tough one, too. So as we get to the second round here, Chalmers got back-to-back -back picks. So Vlad is the first one. The second one, Machado. Not a bad start there. Get those corners done. Move on. I actually like that strategy quite a bit at the turn this year. Take care of first and third, then you're good. Just outfield and pitching, and then you figure it out. Raphael Devers at 202. Wonky Penguin up for 203. Uh, Mayor, you got a guess there. You work all day with Kelly. What do you think she's going to do here? I don't have a guess. She's pretty smart. So she's I, I, I do agree that Bobby Witt was kind of a surprising pick. Well, maybe she's changing it up. You know? I think I know what she's going to do, because this is exactly what I've talked about with Bobby Witt. Uh, Freddie Freeman is ridiculously solid pick. That would be the most sense on the planet to pair with. There it is. And that's, there it is. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not because you said it. It might be in spite no, of clearly the fact not. that you said it. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that's, that's the exact pair I started with the last mock draft we did was Witt and Freeman. Yeah, I love Bobby's that pair. I love that pair. Cool. If you're going to commit on Bobby Witt where there's yeah. a little bit of risk, Freddie Freeman is like the ultimate floor with great upside. It, that's an insane start for Kelly. It's stupid. We shouldn't allow this. <laughs> 204 that one fool is up next with five seconds on the clock and the pick is corbin burns so the first pitcher off the board is corbin burns juggernaut up at 205 um pitching generally speaking uh worm just get your your thoughts on this are you somebody that targets the pitching earlier you wait for that more fourth and fifth round grouping uh, I adore the pitching depth in that sort of like third to seventh ish rounds this year. So, I mean, if a value falls, I'm always going to be open to it, but by and large, I am targeting hitters early because I just think there's so many possible, really good pitchers you can get later. All right. We're going to go up to the part where we're all picking, which is all that we all care about. Pete Alonzo goes at two Oh five. The Welsh is up here with 13 seconds on the clock at two Oh six. Oh man, I'm I'm dealing with position oh, eligibility man. versus what I want to do. I, I can't I can't pass up Trout. I'm not gonna pass up Trout here. Uh, I'm really upset because I wanted to do something completely different, but I just cannot pass up Trout. The only reason I'm pondering is because we're only doing three outfielders on this one. If this is a five mm -hmm. outfielder, this is like I don't even worry about it. But the positions are a little bit more squished, and I didn't think Trout was gonna be there. So this altered my plan a little bit. So I got two outfielders to start and a three outfielder, which is not ideal, but I won't be thinking about it for quite some time. Not too much hesitation at 207. Paul Goldschmidt to Ryan. Ryan, talk about it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, first base again, you know, there's stars at the top, maybe not as much depth as previous years. I just want to get one of those guys that I really trust going to contribute in a lot of categories. I love pairing him with Trey Turner. Okay, Austin Mike, that's Riley. That's what I was going to go. That's, what I, was, that's what I wanted to do here, Mike. That's a great pick. 208, Mike Mayer, Austin Riley, nice value here. Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing there is third base. Like, you guys have talked about it all day. Like, the drop-off at third base is unlike any other this year. Like, there are other, like, thinner positions, but third base is, like, there's a cliff. And if you don't it's get one early, yeah. 
it's a scary, scary place uh, where people should never roam, should never go. Uh, dry? Is it is it Drylac? Am I seeing that correctly? Am I reading it That's correctly? That's another Pokemon. That sounds like another it's, one it's of those Pokemon. Pokemon. We had Muchen earlier. Now we have Dryjack. Um, let's just call him. Let's go. Uh, Pikachu and Pokemon. Go you gotta catch them all. You have to. Uh, Mr. Buster is up next at the two ten pick here. As I continue to think. Do I take Nolan Arenado here at third base because it's so bad? I know one guy I'm definitely hoping to take, but I'm not going to say it out loud because I got two more picks. And I can say it now because he went. Yep. It's Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> we so all obviously knew that. Welsh knew that I'm going to do that every single time you give me the chance. Uh, second base also uh, not a great position either. Uh, Garrett Cole goes off the board. So the draft wizard is telling me to take Sandy Alcantara, which – I actually kind of like that, to tell you the truth. That's a pretty easy selection there for me. So I'm going to go ahead and take that because I've already got a hitter and a pitcher. Now i got another pitcher. So now i got to look for another hitter. Uh, Lindor, an interesting piece here. Spencer Strider, those are all the guys out there. But I kind of think I am going to take uh, that leap into third base because it is just bad. And I'm going to go ahead and take Nero and Arenado off the board. So Arenado goes to me. I'm going to have to make up some stolen bases here soon. But we'll figure that out. Flooring socks. Flooring socks. Uh, what color socks are you wearing right now, Mayor? Just out of curiosity, because you just had another kid. And typically speaking, you have no idea what you're doing or how you're getting dressed in the morning. Hmm. That was going to be my answer. I have no idea what color socks. Probably some hey, kind of no like idea. black with color in them. I'm not sure. Are they even matching? Probably not. Um, I actually never match socks on purpose. Oh, you're one of these people. Why mm. Why is that? My my oldest daughter does that, and I have, I don't understand why. I feel like you might be like Eno's kid. Did you root for Japan last night, too? <laughs> I just that story whole... was amazing, by the way. Eno's yeah. kid trolling him for the last two weeks. He wrote it for Cuba, for Cuba over the United States. But Mayor, why why the two color socks? Uh, well, they're like I just have like a whole drawer of like somewhat similar socks, and I don't like bother like pairing them. So whatever I grab, I grab. So if they match that day, that's great. But if they don't, who cares? Ryan, <laughs> I would feel off all day. Like that would bother me. Maybe it's the Libra in me where I like harmony and balance. But I can't have two different mm -hmm. socks. Like they have to be the same sock, the same thing. I would think about it all day. It would drive me crazy. Uh, unless I'm leaving the house, I very rarely am wearing socks. I prefer the like too long Same sweatpants this. that you kind of cover up the feet with. So this I'm just really not a socks guy in general. When I do wear them, they tend to match. All right. Well, we'll get you your Snuggie later. After Nolan Arenado goes Francisco Lindor, then Justin Verlander to Mr. Buster. Uh, Pikachu took Simeon. Uh, then Mike Mayer took Michael Harris, who is dubbed a potential bust. So you don't think so, Mayer. Why are you so confident taking Michael Harris? I mean, the the potential is there, but the upside is also there. And I also find myself this year, like, I'm trying to get, like, a lot of those, like, five category, like, contributors early, especially, like, guys that steal bases. Even if they only steal, like, you know, five to ten bases, mm -hmm. getting some of those early, because who knows what kind, what's going to kind of happen with stolen bases this year. You know, a guy who normally steals, like, ten bases might steal, like, 15 or 20 this year just because of all the rule changes. So I'm trying to get guys who run early this year. Speaking of that, Jazz Chisholm to you, Worm, uh, at 306. That kind of fits the bill, doesn't it? Yeah, it, definitely. And also, I feel a degree of safety starting off with Turner and Goldschmidt. So I like going for the you know high upside guy with the third round pick. And also, second base eligibility. Clearly, he's going to have outfield el eligibility this year. So I like sort of the extra you know positional flexibility there. I too. probably would have done the same thing because I had a very sim. I have you know the Tucker uh, Trout balance that yeah. Jazz Chisholm was one thousand percent on my peripheral here because also you know power speed combo you can take on the risk but yep. just sniped right in front of me and you know i went spencer strider joe thinking that this league wouldn't touch jacob to grom and there might even be the slightest chance he would come mm. back it didn't happen but i get a little bit more floor i'm going with my pitcher here because i've got two outfielders uh we only have two sp spots two rp spots and then four starting pitcher spots if everybody wonders but there's still some really good sps out there so third round seems to very much be like where I start to dip my toes into the starting pitchers. I don't do it in the first two rounds, but um, there's just great guys. There's a couple of guys I really love, DeGrom, Strider, and another player that hopefully doesn't get picked. you got to know, every time we draft for the Peanuts and the Cracker Jacks, it's always going to be a tough draft. Every single time. These folks are prepared. Matt Olson goes next at 309. Then Aaron Nola at 310. Randy Rosarena at 312 as we look for the four turn. Worm, you were our first guest for our first mock, and this is our last mock after all. So... How do you feel from one to the other? Do you feel more confident? I remember you coming off. You're like, hey, I barely looked at things. I don't know where I am. 
Randy or Rosa Watt. And now how do you feel? <laughs> oh, maybe not quite that bad. But yeah, as I said back then, drafting in January, you're kind of throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. You're kind of still feeling things out, not only feeling out your own personal strategies and evaluations of players, but feeling out what typical draft rooms are going to be doing. You obviously have much more of a sense of that by the time we get to mid to late March season, less than a week away, or I guess just over a week away at this point. Um, so I definitely feel a little bit better. Also watched a lot of these guys in the World Baseball Classic. You know, we've done some drafts, our fantasy pros, salary cap draft. You and I went head to head on that, Joe. So mm -hmm. definitely feeling a lot stronger than I did in January. There you go. All right, let's continue to look at the names coming off the board here. Shane Bieber and Scherzer. So back-to-back -back pitchers at the turn there for Choms. Uh, Ozzy Albies, who I desperately was hoping, but I knew would not make it back to me at 402. And of course, the wonky penguin does the smart thing. to take Shane McClanahan at 403. Yep, of course. Uh, 404, Corey Seager. 405, Kyle Schwarber. You know, I hope Wonky goes out there, and I hope she's in like a million NFBC leagues this year. I really do. Yeah. Uh, Welsh, you took Brandon Woodruff. Let's talk about it. Uh, I mean, it was just the backup of backup plans. I wanted Shane McClanahan like nothing else. And then my backup was Corey Seager. I was going to 100% jump on getting Corey Seager right now. I love his offensive ability. Uh, first time under 300 BABIP, and it was 242, no shift. Offensive numbers through the roof. I wanted him really, really bad. So I kind of came back to it and wanted to get... I, my original plan was getting two aces. I just like Shane McClanahan. I think he can be the number one pitcher this year. But going with Strider and Woodruff, I actually probably provided myself with a little bit more safety. And this happens sometimes. And like... I saved myself because like I want to take Jacob DeGrom and then all would have gone crazy had I not taken Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider safer than DeGrom. Woodruff probably even safer than Shane McClanahan at the end of the day. So I'm fine, but I'm not super happy. And me and Kelly are going to have to have like a conversation Ross a little from bit friends later. fine. You're not no. really fine. You're making fajitas fine. Right. I think that's yeah, kind of safe about right. The Pokemon's up right now, though. Pokemon is up. Uh, but after Brandon Woodruff, Zach Wheeler... Uh, to Ryan Warmly, this was, I believe, Frank Stample said one of his most drafted players. So you drafted Zach Wheeler. How does that make you feel? I feel great. Uh, really reliable. He's my first pitcher off the board. Obviously, I didn't go in that third round starting pitcher run, but he's a guy I'm really happy to get in the fourth. Um, and I think he could easily win more than the 12 games he got last year, just considering the Phillies lineup, even with Harper, you know, out to start the year. OK, uh, after that, we've got Cedric Mullins going to Mike Mayer, certainly stolen bases there. Uh, we talked about the power drop off cut in half because obviously ballpark also second full season. What do you expect Mayer for the third year of Cedric Mullins? Well, I'm going to hope that the Orioles don't continue to move like all of their fences back every year going forward. So that would be great, even though it doesn't really affect him as much. But um, my main concern heading into last year was that the year before was a fluke. And uh, even though the power came down, he proved that it wasn't. And so now I'm comfortable just, you know, I've just filled out my outfield with guys that are going to run and also provide some power. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably reach for a player here, I imagine, pretty soon, uh, oh. just because I can. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and reach for Corbin Carroll because I knew need it. stolen bases. Yeah, the minute uh, you open your mouth, I knew that. You know what? You it did not give me the reach alert. How about you that? You love apples? the reach alert. You're always looking for oh, reach I love alert. a good reach yeah. alert. You know, sometimes you got to pay double to get the reach alert. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, looking around, too. I mean, I could always go with bullpen guys. You know, I'm going to do something I never do, Welsh. When have I ever done this? But you know what? It's a 12-team league. It's the fourth round and take real muto how about them apples wow top player i got the guns two tickets to the gun show baby let's go i i even thought about taking two closers and then i sobered up and decided that was a stupid thing to do uh all right let's continue on so after uh we go through the players we just recently picked we had cedric mullins to mayor then luis robert who i would have taken at 409 george springer 410 dylan sees at 411 that i took corbin carroll and jt real muto Julio Urias goes to Florence Soxes. Uh, Mr. Buster, friend of the show at 503, is up next. Uh, so, Mayor, what are you hoping makes it back to you here in the fifth round? Uh, so you want the exact name? You want me to tell you who, who I'm looking to draft? Well, so Christian Javier draft just went, so you could tell me whoever that might be. I mean, just cute. I'm up. sure they're Good watching. Lord. I don't know if we're on a 10 second delay, how that works. So but... I don't have a pitcher yet, which is, you know, not ideal. But, you know, like I don't know about that. I, I've done a lot of these drafts and I like this is where you start hammering the pitching. You got right. Bossman. You've got uh, Alec Manoa, you Darvish, Zach Gallons, a lot of pitchers out there. So I'm going to go in another direction, even though this might not be the best <laughs> format to do it. I mean, I'm going to take a picture, but I'm going to take Class A. Ah, Class yes. A. Son of Jordan a gun. 
All right. So Alec Manoa, by the way, was not available when it came down to you. He went right before at three oh at five oh four. Excuse me, five oh five class A. Uh, worm five Oh six. What do you got for us? Yeah. Uh, right around ADP here on Bregman. I just want to get one of those high end third basemen. I didn't get one early. My infield is now completely set already, which, which is great. I can really own in on just outfield and pitcher, but, uh, you know, I, I want to get Bregman. I would have been happy if I got gunner a couple you know, a little bit later, but really those were the last two third basemen I was excited about. So I just wanted to get one of them. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, continuing on here with the picks. That means the Welsh is up next. No hesitation from the Welsh. I could have I could have told you what this pick was going to be. It's Josh Hader. Uh, you love your closers, Welsh. Why? Well, it's not that love I love my closers. closers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't love you the do. closing market. I don't yeah, yeah. believe me. Of I, you if I can play in all you save and it. hold leagues, great. Let's let's devalue all of them and do that. But we're not, <clears> and <throat> we've got less lockdown closers than it feels like even last year. And I'd rather be in the market. That's why, you know, mayor taking uh class A is just such a good pick. Like he doesn't go that late usually. And you're getting the top closer off the market. I would have loved him, but hater is in that group as well. I just don't like you can swim in the pool, but I don't want to swim in the pool. I don't want to swim with the Pete Fairbanks and the Jose Leclerc's. If I have a choice, I want to at least have a top guy and you got to pay for it. Uh, the NFBC drafts kind of teach you some of these things. You're going to have to pay for steals. You're going to have to pay for saves. Maybe you don't have to do it in some of your own home leagues, but I'm going to do it here and I'm going to try to win this projection game. Does your wife make you drive her to the save and hold every weekend too? You always go have to with drive. the kids to the save and hold. Always. Have, not, Mayor, I don't know what the save Mayor, and hold is, but always drive. Mayor, Mayor always has the save and hold. He's, he's there all the time. Now he's buying diapers at the save and hold. He's got two kids. Now the whole thing is just crazy. It's just madness. Uh, the picks continue to fly off the board here. After Josh Hader, we have Kevin Gossman going at five Oh eight. Jordan Romano at five Oh nine. Here's your closer on Devin Williams at five ten. Luis Castillo at 5'11", Zach Gallon at 12. What a pitching staff there uh, being built there by Choms. I just want to point this out. Scherzer, Bieber, Gallon. Uh, Mayor, what do you think about that trio? Uh, I wish I would. I had any pitchers instead of the uh, zero starters. <laughs> That's that why I, I asked you. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, you could have taken Zach Gallon. I was kind of willing you to after Manoa was off the board, but you didn't want to do that. So what's the plan for pitching when it comes back? Like, who's the guy you're like, okay. I've got, I got a group here because now you've got to establish somebody who could be an ace for you or potentially for your rotation. Not a whole lot of those guys left. There's a few names. Uh, it's taking a shot on a guy like Carlos Rodon. Are you willing to do that? No, I have a pretty firm no Yankees rule. So uh, ah, that's very wise. Rudon. That's great. no, just kidding. Uh, I do have like one home <laughs> league where I like jokingly rarely have Yankees. Um, but no, I, I mean – the injury risk there, I don't want to like anchor my staff to, to a guy like Rodon, especially like, you know, like first year at Yankee Stadium. I'm, you know, I'm not sure I'm like thrilled about that. So I'll probably yeah. dip further into this like larger tier that we have here. All right. We'll see how he dips because not only is Zach Gallon gone, but also you Darvish gone. So Chomps is just taking all the pitchers now. Just, just, he's just like, here you go. I got my four pitchers. That's it. Max Freed goes in Framber Valdez. There Monkey took who I was going to take. Uh, well, Framber Valdez is a nice pitcher there. So it's a nice selection. Uh, Adolis Garcia, Worm, uh, what do you think about Garcia this year? Obviously a player of power and speed, potentially. The speed was a little surprising, I think, for some of us last year. But the rules make it easier to steal uh, bases in 2023. Do you think that number holds, grows, or shrinks? Uh, I, I would guess, I, mean, I don't know for sure, obviously, I would guess it definitely grows, but that would be my answer for pretty much anybody, just given the rules <laughs> yeah. like you alluded to. And, uh, you know, I, he's not somebody that I'm targeting in a lot of places, um, but I think there's definitely a case to be made, especially like you said, if you think those numbers even go higher, um, those are really nice counting stats that aren't always easy to find. Yeah, absolutely. We're continuing on to Loya Menez. Uh, what I was hoping, again, would make it to me. He did not. 605, Gunnar Henderson to the Welsh, 606. Let's go. Third Man. base is rough. You got if the last I, If one. I hadn't already taken Bregman, I would have been yeah, furious. I know, right there. but you know, yeah. Worm tried, in that last draft I did with Worm, he tried to get all the Orioles. It was a guy, when did like four Orioles on that team, something like that? Uh, I Six. got sni sniped a couple of times, I think, on like Adley and Gunner. I, I, I ended up with a couple guys late, like the Santander Dares of the world, but but not the Stars. Worm, this all is right. what I was going to do. I, I, th I was sitting long and hard to get maybe the top two closers and have like probably the two best closers that you can have in this group. I was going to take Ryan Presley. Yeah. But I still like a few guys, and I decided to pivot off of it, and that's why I went with Gunnar Henderson because third base is such trash. But I love your Presley pick because I was like two seconds away from just clicking his name and not thinking yeah. about anybody I, else. I almost never invest heavily in closers, but I like to get at least one, like you were talking about in the last round. Like I, I don't want to have to be playing in those waters for both of those guys. Exactly. Understandably so. All right, Ryan Presley gone. 
Dalton Varsho to Mayor. Mayor, uh, you're deciding that you just hate all pitching, right? So you're going zero SP. Is that the yeah? Uh, maybe the I just maybe I just been playing in too many two catcher leagues lately. You know, this, this <laughs> early in the draft season, so I just I saw Varsho there, and I was like, you know what? Who cares? Who needs pitchers? Let's just fill it, fill this out. Eh, who cares? I'll just go get it later. Uh, Iglesias and Will Smith go off the board next uh, at six oh nine. Excuse me. Right after Varsho was Rodon, then Will Smith, then Iglesias. Now it's to me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pound on the outfield a little bit here. Let's go take Teoscar Hernandez. Love it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and take Starling Marte also. So I'm just mm. going to go continue to just that. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with the outfield. I got Corbin Carroll. I've got Teoscar Hernandez. I got uh, uh, who else? I just take Starling Marte. So there you go. Taking the advantages there where I can get them. I'm drowning the pool at the same time. Top players on the board. Uh, O'Neill Cruz at 702 goes to Florin Sox. Mr. Buster at 703 is next. Uh, Mike Mayer is up in two picks. So, Mayer, is this the breaking point where you finally take a starting pitcher? And uh, what's it going to be like for you when Carlos Carrasco is your ace? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Carrasco will not be my ace because I would just quit and leave. The There's draft. one ace on the board. It, Joe Musgrove, to me, is still an ace. Like, if you pull off Joe Musgrove here, then you're the, you're the Mac Daddy, as the kids said in the 90s, I believe. I got to be honest, the pick is not, not going to be Joe Musgrove. Oh, not going to be Joe Musgrove. Welsh, who would you, who's your fallback ace, Welsh? Who do you have? I mean, of aces that are still available. I mean, I kind of wanted you to shut the hell up about Musgrove a little bit. <laughs> like, sh 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 shut your mouth. But like at 76, it's a little tough because he is going to miss a start or two. But I think we are missing a lot of aces. Uh, but Mayor, you ended it with Tristan McKenzie, who, eh, you know, that is a little bit higher. And I think a lot of people are down, but you are not, my friend. Yeah, why? uh desperation oh, why desperation would be the first one this is always uh, no, my favorite he... part of this fantasy fest because it's been like four plus hours now and, and chris who our esteemed producer has done a phenomenal job of running this show he knows once i cross over the fourth hour the filter is just completely gone and i just that that's it i start to get really salty and and goofy and uh yeah this is the y range this is the, yeah this is where we're at robbie ray went right before you would you have taken ray over mckenzie or no mayor i would have taken ray yeah Okay, so Ray would have been the pick. Uh, right. Brian Reynolds goes to Worm Welsh. Musgrove is still on the board. You pulling the trigger, buddy? Oh, man, no. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm, I got to get this guy. I want my stolen Two bases. seconds. I, I got him. I got him. I love Andres Jimenez so Me much. Too. And yeah. um, I hate not getting him. I think his stolen base totals are going to go up. The Bat X actually gave him one of the biggest boosts of any player. He's up to like 35. I think, no, maybe it's 28. It was like from 21 to like 28 mm. stolen bases on the year. I love Andres Jimenez. I get to uh, slot him in at second base here, and I just needed to lock that up. That, that's who I wanted, but I just needed a pitcher so bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I almost thought about taking him, but then I was like, oh, I'm going to take all the outfielders and just be. And then Tommy respect. Edmond, right? At Joe Musgrove and Tommy Edmond, which were the other two guys on the list <laughs> yeah. just right after him. Bang, bang. I thought about Jimenez and Edmond and just finishing off the middle infield as opposed to finishing off the outfield, but. I have more concerns with the outfield than anything else. Brian Reynolds, by the way, was the outfielder that uh, the worm took here. Ryan, uh, 27 home runs last year for Brian Reynolds, a 262 batting average. Good chance he gets dealt somewhere else. Uh, if he does, is that a big piece of the puzzle of why people should be looking at Brian Reynolds this year? Because he could end up on a contending team in the second half that could really help his stats down the stretch or playoff run stats. I, I think for sure. I mean, we know that he's a good player. I didn't have any outfielders yet, so I, you know, really felt like I. How could you? I took some, them all. Somebody, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, but then also, of course, you know, the ceiling just goes up even higher if he gets traded to a guy where he can get even more counting stats. So that, I think that's definitely part of the equation. Maybe he's not a guy I'm going to reach on, but when I have a strong infield, I've already gotten a starter and reliever. I'm happy to get him as one of my outfield pieces. Okay, let's recap the draft here. After Jimenez to Welsh at 707, then we had uh, at 708 Joe Musgrove to Juggernaut. Uh, that one fool. Then at 709 took Tommy Edmond. Willie Adamas at 710. Ryan Helsley at 711. Adley Rutschman at 712. Somebody check on Worm. You okay, <laughs> Ryan? It, it was it was a lock I was going to take him with my next pick, so it was smart that they took him there. <clears throat> you got to take him early there. All right, Reese Hoskins goes next, then Sal Perez. Little mini catcher run here. Uh, Tim Anderson to Wonky Penguin out of my queue and onto her team. A great value at 804 for Jose Abreu to that one fool. Yep. Uh, first base is rough. That's a good value if he bounces back into that 30 home run range. Juggernaut selects Byron Buxton right hey. from underneath the Welsh. 
Uh, oh, that one's got to hurt. I us. wasn't going to take him. I wasn't going to take him. Even though he's I'm, a full-time DH now? And no, I love it. Get hurt. I, I love it. I'm, you know I'm all about Bucks, and I probably would have tried to get him last round. It's always okay. hard to tell. Like You guys all hate him, so it's like maybe I can. I actually, I I had, him I actually had him at the top of my queue for this next had, pick. Once Adley went, Bucks was going to be my pick. Because he's a I DH, right, Ryan? Him. I mean, at this point, that's what I wanted. I, you're going to DH him? It takes yeah. a fair amount of that risk away. I think it takes a ton of the risk away. Um, but the shortstop market is getting really bad. I wanted Wander. I wanted O'Neill Cruz. They went before. Xander Bogarts really fell. I know the numbers kind of tapered down, but guess what? He's just going to be hitting between monsters all across the board. Run total should look good. I think the homers will kick back up. To get him at 90, Xander Bogarts is like a great deal at this point. But I was honed in to Jose Abreu right there. So that was a little snipe uh, for me. Okay, uh, Byron Buxton, then Xander Bogarts for Welsh. Batista goes to the worm, and uh, Mayor takes Nathan Lowe, uh, Felix Batista. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Batista going uh, to you, Ryan, and uh, at 8.07, your thoughts. Yeah, well, after Adley went, I had to get an Oriole. And also, I'm not really worried about, <laughs> about the injury. The way he's talking, they, they seem pretty unconcerned about it. He was really, really good last year. I think the Orioles are primed to win more games this year than they did last year. He is the primary closer. Assuming health, he's not going to be supplanted from that role. So I think he has a lot of opportunity for save this year. He's going to strike out, guys. I love him as a second closer. Okay, uh, let's talk about Lowe, uh, Mike Mayer. Your thoughts, 808. Can you repeat the 27 home run breakout season? Probably not, but you know, first base. <laughs> I love, is, uh... I love Mike Mayer. There is, it's never a positive. It's just always like, no, it's like the Debbie Downer effect. It like, is a. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, well, it's yeah. like looking at projections. You know, you have to be conservative. So I look at like the conservative side of projections and just kind of you know try to build my team around that way. But uh, like Welsh was saying, I wanted actually Tim Anderson, but he didn't make it. And then you know, shortstop's getting pretty ugly. He first didn't base make it, even... or he just didn't get to you. Like I don't want him to not make it. That he's, sounds really. He's no longer with us. Oh, jeez. That was oh morose. All right. Uh, we have Carlos Correa going, then Camilo Duvall at 810. Vinny Pasquantino at 811. I need more pitchers, so I'm just going to start taking pitchers I like. Uh, let's start with Lance Lynn. And then let's take uh, Lucas Giolito. I don't care about the reach alerts. I really don't care. So there you go. So Alcantara, Otani, Lynn, and Giolito. That's the pitching staff for Joey P right now. Uh, Florence Sox, 902 is up next. Welsh, if I told you you could have Otani, the pitcher, slash hitter, Alcantara, and then the two guys from the White Sox. You going to war with that pitching staff? Going to go to war with that staff. I'm not sure I wouldn't want to go on both of them, but the problem is, is I like both of them. I that's I like like, like, you don't want to go with both buybacks, but I like Giolito. I like Lynn, and they're your three four. You is Lynn a, a buyback? Risk. Fourteen starts last year. Yeah. The end last fourteen starts. No, two and a half ERA. Yeah, I think he's still a. I think he's still a buyback. I mean, he's a buyback because he's not going in the fifties or sixties. He's his ADP is in like the one elevens and whatnot. So um, the only thing I would point out to like what you're building is as long as this is a daily league. If this is a daily moves league, I like what you've done. If you're in a weekly moves league, you're a little bit dangerous with Otani because you're gonna have to weekly pick is he a hitter or a pitcher. So that's why he's not like the consensus number one in some. Well, aspects then we'll of that, pretend but... that it's a daily transaction. Yeah, I figured we were like pretending it was. Yeah. No, no, Whatever's no. better for me, that's what I want to pretend. I figured that's I think what I've was established happening. that. Logan Webb goes to Florence Sox. Then Christian Walker to Mr. Buster at 903. Uh, Dryjuk, uh takes Kelly Jansen at 904. Then Dansby Swanson at 905. Mike Mayer continuing to thumb his nose at pitching. Let's talk about Dansby Swanson. Your thoughts? Same thing I've been talking about the whole time. You know, speed, power combo, and, um, you know, Wanted a shortstop last time around. Shortstop's getting pretty thin. I still really need a second baseman. That position is even uglier, you know, <laughs> po potentially even uglier than my pitching staff is going to be. So <laughs> I still, instead of trying to like, you know, reach a little bit further down to a pitcher I don't like as much, I just wanted, I wanted to grab Swanson while he was there. Is the draft wizard starting to send you like rude messages about pitching yet? Like, hey, Mike, you might want to. We should put that in there. Be like, uh, yeah. hey, buddy, you okay? Uh, hey, buddy, you okay? Yeah. Everything You're all right? Good? You good? The hey buddy message would be nice. Hey buddy, uh, you up? Like a little piece of I think Ryan, just jumps up. Ryan, like, hey. you have a good voice for the, the <laughs> you did radio for a long time. Could you do the hey buddy check in voice for us real quick? Hey, uh, hey buddy, you all right there? Yeah, that's really that's good. Like, See, I knew like. it. That's all, you know, directing is 90% casting at the end of the day. That's good. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Worm, you took Christian Yelich. So, uh, what sort of insurance policy are you taking out with that? 
uh, a very expensive one, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, I, I like I like Elish this year. The rules help him not only in that I think he could run more this year, even as he's getting older, but also like our big complaint with him is that he hits the ball on the ground so much. But with the shift rules, like maybe a few more of those become base hits. So uh, he's not a guy that I'm like actively going out of my way to target. But again, I really need outfield help here at this point in the draft. And I think there is some upside there with the rules changes. All right. Welsh, to no surprise, you took Blake Snell. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love the Welsh. I'm so happy. That's what Blake Snell said. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he loves it. Every time I do it around Spore, Spore's like, I'm going to tell him because they're buddies, they're Twitch buddies. And I'm like, ah, oh, go yeah, ahead. Pals. Let's, uh, yeah, let's they, get the they, thing. They share mustache wax together. The two Yeah, I can't help that he talks like that. And I have to like <laughs> impersonate it every single time. But I also think he's a phenomenal pitcher. We talked about it earlier in this show that, you know, incredible second half, getting him as my SP3. This is kind of what I wanted. Uh, this is exactly what I want. And I got him outside the top 100. So it's a pretty, pretty good spot. I'm happy about it. Juggernaut takes a leap of faith at 908 with Glass now, then George Kirby at 909. Stephen Kwan to the wonky penguin. She doesn't care all the bad news that the Welsh says about Stephen Kwan. She ain't hearing it. A uh, Jose Altuve at 911. So that's the big question, Welsh. When to Altuve? Is this the right time at 911? Feels like it. I think uh, I think this is the range that I've targeted um, 100 to 115 is the range. The key, and it's not going to help projections, but like who cares, is who is this Jay Gucci is going to need to make sure that they get another second baseman to back up. And like, I personally like Cattell Marte, I think getting Cattell Marte later and slotting him back in, this is the range though. And they jumped right on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm game. Uh, worm. What do you think about Altuve's value? Is this about the range where you gonna miss two months about ninth round, 10th round about where you're ready to take him? Yeah, I actually was considering him with the pick and with the idea being that I could move jazz to outfield, um, I, I, I obviously point, didn't, yeah, you were in a good that, position to actually yeah. pull that off. I, I, mean, I, 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 I was between Yelich and I just went with him. Cause like I said, the rules changes, I was between Yelich, <sighs> Snell and, and Altuve. So those guys all went right after, but I think it's a really fair round for him. Just knowing what you're going to get once he's back healthy. Chalmers continues to, uh, just obliterate pitching Gilbert and Severino next, uh, Andrew Vaughn, then Santander, uh, Chris Bryant at 10.04, then Taylor Ward at 10.05, right before the Welsh. Well, Chris Welsh Bryant figure. was the one. I was 1,000% taking Chris Bryant, so that one kind of stung. He's the enigma. Nobody knows what to make no, of him. That's what I was going to do. I'm going to go with big power uh, to make up for some of the speed. I'm going to go with Giancarlo Stanton, surprisingly, nice. uh, just to fill this out. Because if you guys pay attention, like I got Bogarts for batting average, but power might be sus. Andres Jimenez, maybe same thing. Gunner, maybe. Uh, getting Stanton to go with Trout and Tucker is just going to fill back out my power. But uh, I really wanted Chris Bryant there. Does Bogman still take uh, Giancarlo Stanton? <laughs> no, time? I don't think he does. I think he's over the the Giancarlo Stanton okay. stuff. But uh, yeah, a couple this years is the there where it was like it was a little dicey with thing. him. Yeah. All right, look, flamethrower Hunter Green goes to Ryan warmly in the next pick at ten oh seven. Let's talk about it. Yeah, a big time upside play. Obviously, I know quite a few people who are talking about him as you know a potential like nice dark horse bet for an Al Cy Young. Puts it all together, takes that next step in his development. I have Zach Wheeler as my only other pitcher right now. There's a degree of safety there that I really like, so I'm willing to take sort of the big swing on my second pitcher. And I didn't really love some of the guys that were ranked ahead of him, so I'm happy to do a little bit of a reach on him there. Mayor, speaking of reaches, Nestor Cortez at 10.08. How do you feel about that? Over Clayton <laughs> Kershaw. You took Nestor Cortez over Clayton Kershaw. Let's let's How dive many starts are you going to get out of Clayton Kershaw? Uh, seven or eight. Yeah. yeah you know. and yet, every, yet the Dodgers have a 96 and a half win total. Explain that to me, folks. Somebody explain that to me. Mayor, so why Cortez over Kershaw? Just starts. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I, I need someone I can rely on. I think the Yankees are going to win a lot of games. You know, like you said, who kind of knows what, what's going to happen with the Dodgers? Who knows what's going to happen with Kershaw? You know, there's a potential. He just like shuts it down. Mm -hmm. Shut so it I'm down. Not at a point in my pitching staff to really kind of gamble on someone like Kershaw. Understandably so. I'm going to take a gamble here on Ahmed Rosario and Brandon Lau. Uh, I know it's giving me reach alerts. I really don't care because I need middle <laughs> infield. So I've solidified that. I actually feel pretty good about it. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, after... Uh, you took your dude. I mean, if Glaber Torres had made it to me, I would have taken him. After Kershaw, Glaber Torres went. Then uh, Wilson Contreras. I took Rosario at the 10 12. And at 11 01, I took Brandon Lau. Then Clay Holmes at 11 02. Matt Chapman at 11 03. Uh, Pokemon's up next at 11 04. Uh, let's see who they select. Mike Mayer. Uh, Going to keep pounding on the pitching here. 
I might, yeah, but I might, I might get one of your patented reach alerts with the guy that I'm, I'm thinking about taking. Well, I will. Joe Ryan's on the board. I like him as a starting pitcher. There, Reed Detmers is interesting. Lodolo, Freddie Peralta, Old Man Charlie Morton. Uh, no, it is the Welsh oh, special. Come on, it's my, Jeffrey you're such Springs. A... He's such Ooh. a. Do we have a bleep button? In here? We don't. A, we don't. A hundred percent your personality to do this. And the me. worm took <laughs> Joe Ryan right after, so yeah. I would have taken Ryan still too. What would you have taken Springs as he made to you, Ryan, or no? No, no. I was eyeing Ryan uh, for those last few picks, and I was a little annoyed that you said him. Not that you would uh, be able to influence <laughs> Mayor. To, to, I love it. Like it everyone's me. annoyed that I'm doing my job discussing the like. We literally, are. that's well, what my it, job. It's also is. tough that I guarantee I'm, I'm not going to take someone. Have Joe tell me to take that. Person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Troll Joe. True how, words how could I not like Joe seen. Ryan though? He, he he shares both of our names, Joe. I mean, he, I, he's a no brainer. He is he is our child of love, and uh, forever shall he remain. Uh, Welsh, you took Chris Sale. So uh, talk about buybacks. Your thoughts on Chris Sale? 2023 with a Boston Red Sox team that's going to make Mike Mayer cry a lot this year. Yeah, I mean, I just think I've got uh, I've got some good safety. I've got my one closer with big strikeout numbers. I got Strider, Woodruff, and Snell. I can take a little shot. We talked about it. I think we talked about this earlier too. Like, who's a pitcher that had the what, who the hell were we talking with? Is it Pollock that was like who's a pitcher that has that know. upside to get to back into the top today. twenty? Chris yeah. Sale's one of those guys with the big strikeout numbers. He just got to stay healthy. So I wanted Springs. That would have been one of the guys or someone else in there that I was taking a look at. I don't even think I was necessarily sold on what I was doing here, but Springs going just stinks. But Chris Sale was kind of the next off the board because I wanted to, I want to have four strong SPs. And I think Sale at four kind of works for that. Max Muncy goes at 1108, then Nick Lodolo 1109. Now, Wonky Penguin took uh, McCarthy at 1110, and Jake McCarthy is somebody I had to take because I was short on outfield last night in a real draft and uh now that she took him i feel better about taking because you were you are a negative nancy about jake mccarthy i mean it'll help the projections it'll help wonky win it's not going to help her win a real league it's going to help her win the projections jake damn uh, no. girl shots <laughs> no fired. jake mccarthy for me uh jordan walker 11 11 uh welsh is this the right time for jordan uh, walker i'll ask you that yeah. Again, if you're getting into your risk reward territory, Jordan Walker, yeah. if they announce tomorrow that he's got the gig inside the top 100 easy, this is a value. Um, if you paid 130 and you have to eat it for a couple of weeks, it's not great, but I'm with this. I'm definitely with this range. You're down. You're cool. You're hip. I'm cool. Okay. I'm hip with it. All right. Ian Happ at 11, 12 and Josh Bell at 1201. Charlie Morton at 1202. Lars Newtbar. Oh, now she's now it's personal. See, you said what you said. And then she new barred you. I know she uh, did. Uh, I, she taught you, know, you a lesson. There's great outfielders. I've been staring at Lars new bar for a little bit, but um, there's a couple really good values out there. What, what can I do? What can I do when the fantasy pros cruise here? Mayor and wonky, just both breaking my heart. I just have to pay. Yeah. And that's what we'll They're do. Getting it from Pivot. both ends there. Uh, Juggernaut is on deck. Welsh. So 1206. What do you have your eye on here? What do you hope it makes it to you? Um, nothing concrete that I want to be careful about what I say to you guys, because you guys are rats um, of a whole <laughs> bunch of rats that I want to be careful about here. I oh, see wow. a couple good value. I'm, I'm going to jump on this. This is one that like in the 130 area, I think this is just a solid buy. I'm going to go with Nick Castellanos on the buyback. Oh, I, I don't have a bunch there. of shares, <laughs> but 137 seems like a crazy good deal. Three outfielders. We want to optimize it with a util. This is kind of a no brainer. Love that pick there. Excellent pick. He yeah. was my next guy. Uh, yeah, top, top of my queue as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, line this, I, see, I, I'm getting sniped on both sides from Mayer and, and Welsh. It's it's a terrible place to be picking. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go with, with Freddie Peralta. Obviously, yet another guy with uh, health scares on my team. Uh, but just uh, obviously super talented when, when he's on the mound. So, again, kind of go for the upside play there. All right, uh, Mike Mayer on the clock. Uh, before, uh, excuse me, after Newt Bar, I should say, David Bednar and then Anthony Rendon. Rendon's having a really good spring well. Should anyone care? Uh, mm, not to take him inside the top 150. Uh, we shouldn't. But yeah, he's had a nice spring. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, on this team, if this team is going to win, he's going to be a catalyst to it. He's always been a high batting average guy. You're going to be hitting in some capacity around guys like Taylor Ward and Otani and Trout. If all things worked out, it's great. It's just, you want to get your guys, but you could have gotten Anthony Rendon like 50 picks later. I think that's pretty safe to say. So I, I just don't like where it was gone, but the bounce back for sure. It, I wouldn't count him out. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jordan Montgomery is the, actually, 
I should get to Ryan's pick. Freddie Peralta at 12.07, then Jordan Montgomery. Uh, Ryan, let's talk about Freddie Peralta. That's a great selection there, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, just like uh, I have this team full of injured guys, but, um, you know, I, I if he stays healthy, ton of upside. I think at this point in the draft, when you're middle of round 12, pick 130 something, whatever I was, um, that's the type of upside player that I love that could, if he stays healthy, turn out to be a league winner. Uh, then Jordan Montgomery to Mike Mayer. Nice, solid starting pitcher there. Mayer, your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts was Ryan was talking about us sniping him, and then he took Freddie Peralta, so I had to scramble. <laughs> to <take> <laughs> Yoshida goes next, then Pablo Lopez, then Bryce Harper before me, and then I took Yohan Duran and Andres Munoz. Those are my two relievers. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm fine. That's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. I'll take one of them. If I get both of them, it's the perfect time because if they both close, I've got two what? What would you say, Welsh, if they both close for 75% of the year? Where do they finish at RP? I think they're both top 10. I mean, that's like, I wanted Munoz coming back. So you 100% sniped me there. hundred percent wanted him. I, I think Munoz is a top five closer if he has a job all year. And I think Durand is in that same general vicinity. So I, I think it's great. It's just speculative. It's not going to like projections aren't going to jump through the roof for you or anything like that. But I, I, I love the picks and I wanted Munoz. Bad. I know the projections are not going to like this team. I love this team that I'm drafting here. I will, I will go fight with this team on the battlefield that is fantasy baseball. Rowdy Telez at 1302, Tyler O'Neill at 1303, then uh, Rizzo going, followed by Mike Mayer selecting Nico Horner. Uh, so little Nico Horner uh, sat in a corner and uh, went over to Mike Mayer's team. Let's uh, hear your thoughts on Nico. So the real reason here is because he's going to be my second baseman because he's going to get <clears throat> second base eligibility and second base is really kind of thin. So he's been kind of my cheat code at, you know, if I don't get a second baseman at, or earlier in a draft, I usually, I've been kind of grabbing him here just to try to fill that position. Fair enough. All right. Next is Hunter Renfro to Ryan warmly. Outfield is tough to find. You found one. How do you feel about it? Uh, I really needed power and he's got a lot of it. And that it's basically as simple as that. I do think it's a, it's a fairly decent value at this point in the draft and you can get him here in most leagues. Um, there, there's some upside there, but it's purely a power play. Purely the power play. Welsh, CJ Krohn, injured, can't hit outside Colorado. Why? A big power. He hits in Colorado, and my first baseman were gone. Uh, Rowdy Telez is who I wanted. Uh, that did not work out for me, so I'm just playing a big power projection side for a team that's going to manufacture runs. I want to point out also that earlier in, or at the back end of the 12th round, I was 100% sitting on taking Bryce Harper. I was going to take Bryce Harper, fill that out just because of the shorter, uh, you know, the shorter overall starting roster size and 12 man. So I thought that was a great pick. And I just kind of had to pivot all the way through. But I wanted Rowdy Telez and he went, you know, five or six picks before. So a little bit bummed about that. Ryan, it sounds to me like somebody's got a, a case of the I would is. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, well, uh, not to uh, just agree with Welsh, but Harper was somebody that I was thinking about. <laughs> to in that range and again you know in a league like this yeah, as long as you can make it to the point that he returns you're adding a stud partway through the season i kind of love that strategy if you trust yourself to kind of find the depth to get you through until then well fun question from sean here what do you guys think of getting munoz and seawald i'm just going for munoz if seawald falls in my lap late as insurance i'm fine i'll take him too but what do you think about this um i don't lo like Here's one I like better. I'm not trying Actually, to do it, I guess. I like taking Duran and mm. um and Jorge Lopez because it's cheaper. Like Seawald and Munoz are just big more expensive. Or, you mm. know, if I were to take Barlow, Scott Barlow, I would have to get a roll to Chapman later. Like I'd make those I don't like making that's very like um remember our old RB strategies where we're handcuffing. I don't like to handcuff anything. So mm. I would not be handcuffing two closers inside the top 150. I can make but so like many jokes here, but I'm not going to. But just know Dude, that who the jokes is are Jay, here. The Jay Gucci guy is just such a problem. It's <laughs> so of annoying. our peanuts and cracker jacks. Let's continue on here. Uh we had uh the draft flying right now. Say a Suzuki, then Jeremy Pena 1309. Uh, Willem Contreras at 1310, one of my favorites, the wonky penguin. Reed Detmers to Gooch, the Gooch at 1311, then 1312 turn. You have Jeff McNeil and Jonathan India. So lots of second baseman there for uh, Choms. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle at 1402. Lazarus Lazardo, who I was contemplating as well when I just took my last pick. Wonky Penguin at 1403. Alejandro Kirk, 1404. Robertson at 1405. And Alexis Diaz, 
to the Welsh. You got a closer. How do you feel? Well, I was 100% taking Ryan Mountcastle. You're <laughs> like, oh, why'd you take CJ Cron? Because I thought uh, Wormley was away from me and I could get Mountcastle coming back and I could <laughs> ah, pair so those two. you got two. greedy and you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. I guess. <laughs> I mean, maybe uh, Cron would have kept falling, but uh, my backup plan was Alexis Diaz. I wanted to get, to, uh, I want decent closers and I think he's a lockdown closer. I also think he is 100% uh, an opportunist to be traded. And if he gets traded somewhere, he will continue closing. This wouldn't be like, you know, Melanson getting traded and being a seventh inning or not on the roster type of guy. Diaz will close somewhere, but yeah, Mountcastle was the pick back there. Worm takes Chris Bassett. Solid starting pitcher, Bassett, right, Ryan? Yeah, well, well the three guys I had at the top of my queue were Mountcastle, Lizardo, and Diaz. So uh, that half round really hurt me. I, I kind of panicked, but it's not really a panic to end up with Bassett <clears throat> because he is a good pitcher. I think there's a lot of opportunities for wins coming oh. over to the Jays. Um, and I will say the whole reason that I picked picking right before mayor was so I could eventually snipe him on Mount castle and it didn't happen. So that's very disappointing to me. I'm sad. I'm sad for everyone that that didn't happen. Uh, I'm also sad for Mike mayor who drafted Dustin may, uh, cause you want to talk about, so your argument with Kershaw is a starts and then you took Dustin may explain yourself. <laughs> well, it's several rounds later. And also, you know, Ryan didn't snipe me on Ryan Mount castle, but I had just talked myself into taking Chris Bassett when, you know, <laughs> <clears throat> you Excellent. turned over and I had to take Dustin May. My team name is going to be Reach Alert in this draft, and I don't care. I just took Ezekiel Tovar at 14 12 and then at 15 01, Jose Miranda. Uh, so I've got my middle infield and corner infield solidified. Uh, in between those picks, Sean Murphy at 14 09, 14 10, Rasmussen at Ty France, then my two picks, Peter Fairbanks, Mr. Buster on the clock. So, Mayor, what are you going for next? I don't like, I. I you know, all joking aside, when you're looking at the pitching staff, are you still hitting the pitching or are you still looking just for best player on the board? I've probably <laughs> uh, gotten a little bit too heavy to overcompensate with pitching now. So I need to get back to filling out my lineup, <clears throat> especially, you know, I still don't have a real starting second baseman at least to start the season. So I'm going to take Estrada here, get the eligibility cool. that he provides. Plus he's going to bat at the top of that lineup and at least go. have him as a, a an option kind of all over the board, especially if it's a daily league. Garcia, Bohm, Estrada, Worm, you're up next. Yeah, I'll go Melendez here. Um, like I said, I, I definitely need power. Um, I didn't have a catcher yet. I like that he plays other positions. Um, if I'm if I'm not getting Adley, Melendez is a guy I'm targeting late in a lot of my drafts. Yeah, that was a good Welsh. snipe right in front of me. I mean, that he was just, yeah. he, he shouldn't have been falling where he was. That was pretty stupid, if we're being honest. And that's such a good ridiculous value uh i'm gonna pivot off i'm gonna go with another starting pitcher we talked about upside before i'm gonna go grayson rodriguez and uh hopefully ryan's upset now and then we can <laughs> I, I thought i thought i could wait another another round on him i don't know that he's gonna get the innings i want but when he pitches i just he's so fun to watch he's so good i think that's a yeah. great pick this late but quality over the quantity uh juggernaut is four is 1508 right now on the clock so let's take a look at the rosters and see how they're shaping up here, kind of going through. Let's talk about Ryan's roster. Melendez, Goldschmidt, Chisholm. Uh, then you've got <clears throat> Trey Turner. So a lot of stolen base potential between those two guys. Alex Bregman, Brian Reynolds, Yelich, Renfro. Then Zach Wheeler, Hunter Green, Presley, Batista, Peralta, Joe Ryan, and Bassett. How do you feel? What does this feel like grade wise that the <laughs> draft wizards? Uh, well, it feels like an A plus plus if that's even an option. Um, but uh, more realistically, I, it's it's a team where I like a lot of the players. I'm not sure if I love how they all fit together. It's more of I'm drafting players I like unless here's how I'm sort of filling out the different categories you need to fill out. Um, but I really like all those players and, and I don't feel like I've had any major reaches unlike you, Joe. Oh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I love the play. I'll, I'll take Tavar every day of the week. You let me. Uh, Welsh, you've got CJ Cron, uh, Jimenez, Bogarts, Gunnar Henderson, Kyle Tucker, Mike Trout, Castellano, Stanton, Spencer Strider, Woodruff, Hader, Diaz, Snell, Sale, Grayson Rodriguez. How do you feel? Uh, I love my pitching staff. I probably need to get an innings eater uh, to compliment maybe a few guys that are questionable in there. My hitting is pretty good. Cate categorically, it doesn't love what I'm doing right now with stolen bases and runs are a little bit low, but I think I'm near the highest on uh, like RBI and home run totals. Stanton helped that. I think there's a pretty good balance here. There's a couple things I would have rather, you know, gone a different way, but I got some of my guys like Andres Jimenez. Uh, I did want Castellanos in here. So I don't know. This is probably like a B plus team at best. I don't know how well I'm going to project. Mike Mayer, Dalton Varsho, Nathaniel Lowe, <clears throat> Estrada, Swanson, Riley, Horner, Julio Rodriguez, Michael Harris, Cedric Mullins, Tristan McKenzie, 
Nestor Cortez, Class A, Springs, May, and Montgomery. Your feelings and thoughts. I don't think I had pow- hit, hit enough power like earlier on. And <clears throat> I think one of the mistakes I made early was I filled up. Um, I, I really liked the three outfielders, but I kind of took three pretty similar players when I could have probably pivoted to either a better pitcher or filling out my middle infield before it kind of uh, evaporated. Gotcha. All right. Remember, if you're watching the show, listening to the show here, go over to the YouTube channel, leave a comment below, even if you're watching it back, because somebody's going to want a premium upgrade to Fantasy Pros for one year. Just one. That's it. You get one for a year. So make sure you drop a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB. Let's run through some more of the picks. So after Rodriguez went to Welsh in 1507, then Jorge Polanco, Whit Merrifield, Cattell Marte, some really interesting pieces here. Alex Verdugo, 15-11, then J.D. Martinez. Oh, mad Chalmers again. Yeah, Joey Manessis, Cronenworth, Seawald, Singer at 16-04, then 16-05. Uh, Stevenson, Brandon Nimmo to the Welsh. Out of my queue. Nice work, Welsh. I had him all ready to go. Needed average, needed runs. That helps. Uh, he's falling just due to the kind of wonkiness of the injuries and stuff like that. And it's an okay pick. I, I have enough power that I think I could balance it. And I'm going to try to pull a couple rabbits out of my hat here uh, in the next couple rounds if I can. I look forward to seeing that. That looks fun. Uh, after Nimmo goes Eugenio Suarez to the worm. Yeah, another strict power play. And I'm starting to feel much better about my power than I did before the last couple of rounds. But that's another one where I I just want power. Not easy to find late, so I wanted to get him. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take Andrew Heaney and see if that works, which it probably won't, but whatever. Uh, that's, that's just that's the world we live in. Uh, looking at my roster right now in terms of needs, uh, I still need a corner guy. I forgot I didn't have a first baseman, so that's where that ended up. Uh, Nailer's around. Vargas is around. I think we'll just go ahead and take Nailer. That's an Ariel Cohen uh, favorite one. So a little shout out to my boy Ariel. Uh, and look, a little bit of 20 pop there. Look at my squad right here. JT Real Muto, Jose Miranda, Brandon Lau, Rosario, Arenado, Nailer, Tovar, then Teoscar, Starling Marte, Corbin Carroll, Shohei Otani, uh, Contra, Lance Lynn, Duran, Munoz, Giolito, Heaney, I like this T Welsh. It's definitely a little boomer bust, but you know what? I'm feeling good about it. What do you think about this roster here? Yeah, like you said, it's <laughs> not going to be great on the projection side, but I think you're getting your guys no. you're pulling up here. <laughs> this is definitely a piece of Pia like team. Yeah, it feels very piece of Pia. It does. It's a little loud, a little obnoxious, peasy, but peasy. oddly charismatic at times. All right, let's go to the next pick here. Josh Young, nice pick there for Florence Sox. Then Mr. Buster takes Javier Baez at 1703. I have zero Javier Baez interest or shares, Welsh. How do you yep. feel about Baez this year? <laughs> zero interest or shares also. Want to be, but not going to do it. No, I just friend. can't do it. Uh, Riley Green it goes next at 1704, so it's time for Tigers, apparently, as we kind of wrap things up here. Uh, Sandoval next for uh, Mike Maris. We're closing things out there, so rounding out the pitching, we've got three picks left each, I believe now. <laughs> Ryan, you're uh, just And Cabrian a... Hayes goes oh, to Ryan Warmly. Brian Hayes has not been able to get out of his own way, basically. So uh, let's talk about this, because at what point, Worm, do you go, maybe it's just never going to happen for this guy? Uh, not at this point yet, <laughs> I would say. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm a huge believer in the Pirates because I got uh, Hayes and Reynolds earlier. Um, but I, I, I mean, again, he's a really talented guy. You're right. He hasn't been able to get out of his own way. But again, picking this late, I'm really happy to just take a swing on a guy that I think is a good player and can figure it out in a more meaningful way than he has to date. Okay. Meaningful. Uh, Colton Wong, uh, one of Welsh's favorites here, uh, especially if he ends up into the top of the order, 1707. That could be a huge bargain, especially in the stolen base totals. Yeah. I mean, I was 100% taking Key Ryan Hayes. It's one of the few players I had in my queue. That surprised me. Why? Well, because stolen base, corner infield, stolen base. I I wanted to pick up some more stolen bases. I think he's one of the better values that was left on the board. We're also not taking bench players. So I'm, you, like, we as mock drafters have to optimize our starting lineup, which is going to maybe change a few things that we do when we're not drafting bench. And he was just the perfect, like, starting optimization for stolen bases on a corner infield. Uh, I love Wong. Wong would have been one of the picks coming up here soon, but um, that was uh, Ryan again, just <laughs> such a dirtbag. <laughs> I love Wong, a story about a man and his Wong. Uh, continuing on, Tony Gonsolin at 1708, then Alex Cobb at 1709, uh, Cabrera at 1710, Miguel Vargas at uh, 1711. 
followed by Jock Peterson at the turn at 1712, Alex Lang at 1801, Jack Flaherty at 1802. That's another guy got zero shares of Welsh. Do you think there's any world where Flaherty can really turn things around? I never say never. I'm not that type of person, but no. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Like, it's not going to be That's what I'm going to bet on. I'm not going to bet that at all. But, you know, hey, stranger things have happened. All right. Scott Barlow goes next to the Wonky Penguin. Ball by that one fool at 1804. We'll see what they have up their sleeve as we continue on with this draft. Closing things out here pretty soon. We've got a few picks left on the board as we're wrapping up. Hunter Brown to the juggernaut after that. The Welsh. At 1806, what do you got? Ooh, well, I got a, not many picks here left. I got to see where my cue is. I got that sneaky guy, and I need a corner, a catcher, and a pitcher here. So that sounds like a setup to a joke, by the way. Uh, we'll lock our pitcher, and we're going to get John Gray. We'll are, we're sure. going to lock down John Gray as my final starting pitcher, oh, and then ooh. hopefully nobody touches the last two guys I want to take, or I'm going to flip a table at the four and a half hour mark of this show. <laughs> well, we shall see <clears throat> after you go ahead and took Jonathan Gray, the worm is on the clock here. Let's see if he touches one of Welsh's things. Well, I, uh, I really, I really <laughs> thought I was going to be able to wait another round on Edward Cabrera and then Kelly took him. So that, that seems was, to be the theme of your draft. I thought I could wait another round. That, for that was extremely dot, dot, disappointing. Dot. I, I did. I don't feel good about Abrams, but more speed. I think he'll get, you know, plenty of playing time in, in a bad lineup. And um, I'm really, really getting a lock on the speed with him and Turner and Chisholm and, and Hayes. So there you go. All the speed. Yeah. That's uh, you know what Warm likes. He loves the speed. Can't get enough of it. Uh, <clears throat> I need for it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was going to do the same uh, joke. There you go. Well, you know, it's fine. Uh, there we go. And then uh, Sonny Gray goes to Mike Mayer because he likes pictures that were good a couple of times uh, years ago. Right, also Mike? his disposition, a little Sonny Gray. It's a, yeah. it's a good Mike Mayer. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually, that, that does fit. Uh, let's see what Pokemon does next year. Pokemon's got uh, Alex, uh, Oscar Gonzalez, excuse me, then Buster's up, then me. Got to figure it out. The question is how many Texas Rangers pitchers am I allowed to take and still compete in this league? That is the question because I could just empty the tank here and go with do it. Clark and Evaldi. Well, why, why not? not right? Why I, mean, not? I mean, we're having fun. We're only, we're only going we're into friends. hour five. That's oh, all. We go ahead. Oh, Evaldi went right underneath me there. Oh, <laughs> that's oh so Mr. Buster's watching being rude. Hanniger goes next. Oh, geez. Oh, I went full. Uh, <laughs> Full Norm McDonald on that one. <laughs> yeah, you did. I was about to say. <laughs> oh, 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 boy, I can't believe it. OJ oh, oh, Simpson. Yeah. yeah, my face is red. Uh, let's go ahead and take Tyler Molly and take Trey Mancini. I'm going to take my reclamation project guys here, see how that works. Uh, I'm all in on Trey Mancini, especially since first base sucks and outfield sucks. And you know what? Trey Mancini is a guy that just a couple years ago was dropping 30 bombs and Chicago is a heck of a better place right now for him to be hitting. So I'm going to take a shot. Mundesi goes next at 1902. I thought about taking him, but you know what? I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Not ever. Uh, Mr. Buster at 1903 selects uh, Vaughn Grissom, who is tenuous right now to make the club. 1904 is Pokemon is Drygic, uh up next. And then Mayor at 1905. Mayor, what do you got your eyes on? Ooh, Vaughn Grissom. Well, I need to fill up my last two utility pieces and I'm looking for kind of like eligibility to help me across the board. And also I really need power, but there's not a whole lot of that left around. Nope. Not a whole lot of power period nowadays. It's uh it's slim pickings out there. Out the I also streets. wanted Justin Turner, my last pick and I couldn't believe that he went when he went. Really? You wanted Justin Turner? Just curious. Just, I like to get him this late cause he's going to bat in Fenway park. He's going to hit third in that order and he could be a mm -hmm. sneaky late round 20 home run kind of guy. And he's also going to, at some point, probably get first base eligibility. So he'll be first and third. Okay. Brandon Drury goes to Mike Mayer, guy who plays everywhere, makes a lot of sense. Then uh, Donovan to Ryan Warmly. Ryan, what do you think about Donovan? Another uh, super utility kind of guy. I, I was going to say, speaking of a guy that plays everywhere, I mean, basically <laughs> right? gets you position eligibility everywhere in your roster except catcher. And I, I think there's more power potential there. He sit pretty well this spring. I know he's not, he might not play every day. It'll kind of depend on, on how the roster shakes out. But uh, he's a guy I really like to have on my team, especially if it's daily lineups. Okay, which we already pretended it was. 
because yeah. it was fun. Uh, Will Myers, Welsh, 1907. There you go. So Craig Mish had some good things to say about Will Myers earlier in the show, and now you're going to put him on your roster. Yeah, I think he's still a sneaky source of uh, stolen bases. Uh, he's good power. Cincinnati is one of the most hitter-friendly environments out there. He should be hitting in the middle of the lineup. Why not? I was contemplating between him, and I'll just say it since we're in the last round, Josh Rojas, just because Rojas gets you a little bit of position eligibility. He's projected higher on the stolen bases. Actually, Tristan Casas, who just went, those were the three hitters I was contemplating to put into that uh, corner infield spot. But I decided Will Myers just because of the home run speed potential and just, you know, where he's hitting is really, really, really phenomenal spot in such a bad, bad ballpark. Elvis Andrews, uh, then Tyler Anderson, then Tristan Casas, Evan Phillips, as we round out the last round here into Jorge Mateo. Now, the last picks. Uh, Schaumer is up next here as we go through. Uh, just from the feel of the draft, Welsh, who do you think won this draft? Ooh, um, I think, uh, what is their name? The person that's been pissing me off the mm -hmm. whole time. Um, Gooch, the Gooch. The Gooch. I think the mm -hmm. Gooch is going to win. I think it's top mm -hmm. three is going to be like Gooch, Schaumer, and uh, Kelly. And none of us will be in the top three. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment. Ryan, do you agree? Well, it's interesting that those were picks 10, 11, and 12. So picking at the end provided a lot of opportunity to her, yeah. a lot of us. Yeah, I, I think Goshi, or however you pronounce it, was they, they, they got a lot of the players. I yeah, we might, we might be saying something <laughs> appropriate with it. By the way, well, I'm taking the greatest pick of this entire draft, and it hasn't caught up to projections. I'm taking Gabriel Moreno at the end of the draft, who's now the starting catcher for the Diamondbacks. So sneaky, Let's sneaky, go. thank you. Let's go. Worm, last pick. Yeah, this is not a pick that is going to like get highlighted as a great value pick by the, you know, the system. I do think it is Kyle Bradish. Uh, he had some really impressive starts last year against the Astros, who obviously were a great lineup. Um, I know that he's been talked about a lot on the podcast and I think earlier in this stream as well. Um, he and Edward Cabrera are the two pitchers I'm getting late in every draft I can. Obviously, Kelly got Cabrera before I could, so I'm happy to get Bradish as the guy instead. All right. I know that Mayor's got a jet, so Mayor, you make your pick. You can leave whenever you need to. I know you've got important things going on. Uh, Seth Brown goes to Mike Mayer. Uh, then uh, Adam goes after that. Then Rojas. A lot of pressure with me for Mr. Irrelevant, the very last mm, pick here. Brock I'm going to go ahead pick Brock and I'm going to well, I mean, Garrett Whitlock, Manaya, Carrasco, all still out there. I'm going to take my boy Garrett Whitlock because that's been a guy that I really like. He's got that dual eligibility. I got a B as I always get, B, B plus. Uh, that's see. where I'm at. The projected oh. standings, Welsh, what grade did you get? I got an 80, so I just barely got, I got a B minus there. on there. They did not like it, so Ooh, uh, 80 out of 100. Sixth. Wouldn't you know it, Mike Mayer got a B plus, it looks like. I think an 86, I believe. Hey, now. Hey, now. Wow. Look at you. And where's Look the worm? This. The worm is dead last. The worm is dead last. <laughs> I got worm. 73 out of a, that's way worse than I did in January. Wow. And well, he was 11th. This is the, the system's broken. Wow. The, the matrix well, here's broken. the thing, uh, Ryan, I think the lesson learned here is don't work that hard. You know, you <laughs> yeah. came in knowing Shipping nothing in. really. And yeah, yeah. We're just scrapping around. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm shocked at wonky Look, 10, 11, 12 Welsh wonky and worm, which is also. Nice. Sounds good together. Yeah. Uh, the winner is Pokemon Dry Jack or wow. whatever the heck that is at 98. What an incredible a drillic. Is it drillic? It's hard to see because it's very tiny on my screen. But now Chico I can see go mom. Drillac. Oh, I must get Drillac. Drillac is who I must get. Ha ha. Uh, Florin Sox was second. Mr. Buster was third. So shout out to the three of them beating all of us. Mike Mayer beat me. I don't know how he has no pitching. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Expert That's opinions. That's the process, babe. Yeah, I guess. Trust in the process. Dalton Del Don and Fred Zinke and Andy Barons all hate my team. So does Joe Arico. Last time he gets invited to the show. Uh, Welsh, real quick, any fun expert opinions you want to share? Yeah, well, actually, Joe Arico loved mine more than anybody else. Funny go. enough, you know who else liked it? Chris Welsh, Kelly Kirby, and Joe Pizapia. Loved my draft. And uh, Ariel Cohen and Ryan Amore, they hated me the most. So thanks, Ariel. I appreciate it. But Joe, you loved me. You and Kelly loved I me. So love you really loved me. <clears throat> Thank Worm, you. who loved you? Uh, both you. both Kelly and Mike Mayer loved me, so uh, I don't know why Mayer is so much higher. If you wanted to take all the players I got, but uh, they they both love my draft, which is which is great to see because I trust their opinions a lot. Uh, no no fantasy pros guys disliked my draft, which I don't know what that says about me, but 
<laughs> Mayor, how about you? Uh, I liked my own draft a lot. I had B. Don, <laughs> uh, Travis Argo, Dalton Del Don, and uh, our own Pat Fitz Fitzmorris also liked my draft. Yeah, there you go. Shout out to the Fitzy here. And a shout out to everyone who joined us today, especially all of you watching and listening back. I know if you missed any parts of this, there's going to be a podcast version where we do a shorter version of that. So check that out as well. Special shout out to Chris, our producer, for the last four hours and change. Uh, not only setting everything up, but running all these graphics and everything for you here. A phenomenal job by him, as always. But we expect that of him because he's got Emmys. So, you know, he's an important person <laughs> on the grand scale of things at Fantasy Pros. Also, thanks to our guest, Paul Spohr, Nick Pollock, Frank Stamfel, Chris Meany, Craig Mish, Eno Saris, and of course, the worm, Mike Mayer and the Welsh. Could not do it without you guys. I want to thank everybody once again. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB. That'll do it for us, but the story of the game goes on. We'll see you next time, kids. Enjoy your fantasy baseball.